I had a student in my online course, Robotics Learn by Building, ask about body heat to generate electricity via Peltier Seebeck devices. Now I explain what these devices are in another science short, and I've been fascinated by them for many years. He wanted to power LEDs for use as a flashlight powered by body heat. Now the student's question was quite coincidental in its timing as I had ordered a pile of these thermoelectric tiles for a science short and I had a friend who had recently asked about using the body heat of large livestock to power simple electronic devices on the animal. So partly out of curiosity and partly because of my friend's inquiry, I had already conducted experiments just using heat from my hand to see just how much voltage and current one of these thermoelectric generating tiles could produce. Now it was impractically small. At best I could get maybe 0.15 volts, though it was usually down around 0.05 volts, just a few millivolts. Normally you use these tiles with a much higher temperature or heat source. So I explained all of this to the student and that it would require so many tiles just to get a slightly usable voltage that it would be pretty impractical. He wrote back a week or two later inquiring about this new microchip that came out, the LTC3108 from Linear Technologies. I investigated and I was blown away by what these guys and girls in the lab had developed. The chip was specifically designed to harvest energy from extremely low power sources, and in particular, Pelche generation tiles. So I got a few of these breakout boards made by the Chinese company CJMCU, and to my amazement, was able to light up a white LED just with body heat from my hand. In this science short, we'll take a look at the exact circuit I used and how they managed to pull off this amazing feat so you too can do this at home. I was frankly astonished at what these guys had accomplished. They took voltages as low as 20 millivolts and boosted it to voltages high enough to drive even white LEDs and with usable current, all with a frankly very poor temperature differential on the Peltier tile. Even germanium transistors require 15 times more voltage just to forward bias them. So you can see why I was amazed. The engineers had managed to develop an on-chip MOSFET transistor with an insanely low volt forward bias voltage combined with an ultra low voltage drive circuit, which switches the incoming ultra low voltage through a transformer to boost it to a higher usable voltage. Now, while the chip was specifically designed with Pelche tiles in mind, it is effectively a really sophisticated jewel thief. So besides Pelche tiles, it can be used to harvest any ultra low to low voltage energy source, including uh, small solar panels, inertial generators, or even picking up electromagnetic fields around us. And it can be used to trickle charge a supercapacitor or battery for times of no power production. So I have to give kudos to Linear Technologies here. I am impressed. Okay, you can download the 3108 data sheet here and the links to everything will be provided in the description. When you look at the data sheet, you'll see that there is multiple configurations because it can be used with multiple energy sources. Solar panels and inertial generators naturally produce a much higher voltage than Peltier tiles. So the circuit will be different because you no longer need the booster transformer. But the first circuit in the data sheet is the one of interest. And this is the circuit diagram we will use. In fact, what CJMCU does not tell you is that this is the circuit diagram of their breakout board. 
all of these parts have already been included on the board. Linear Technologies did not include any component labels on the datasheet sample circuit, and the component labels on the breakout board are hopelessly buried beneath the soldered components. So I have labeled the circuits and their corresponding components here for your convenience. All you need to add to the breakout board is the transformer, the thermoelectric tile, jump a couple of solder points, and make some connections between VOX, VS1, and VS2 to select your output voltage. Easy peasy. So taking a look at the board, this is uh, the way you get it. Because the breakout board was designed for multiple purposes, including source voltages that do not need to be stepped up through a transformer, uh, this whole transformer half of the circuit board can be removed. And you need to order the transformer separately. To use Pelche tiles, you will need the 100 to 1 transformer. I used a Coilcraft 752 surface mount transformer from Mauser. Now do note, I believe this transformer has been outdated and replaced and will probably have uh, 253P written on it instead of the 752 written on mine. But really, any 100 to 1 transformer will do. If it's not a surface mount transformer, just solder wires to the solder pads with the primary side here and the secondary here. You can solder the surface mount transformer with a reflow workstation or even just use a heat gun, preferably a heat gun with a nozzle reducer on it to get the air jet as small as possible. Put the board flat and level on a heat resistant surface or perhaps on a circuit board holder. Just make sure it's flat and level. Line the dot on the transformer up with the dot on the circuit board. There was enough solder on the transformer and the solder pads that I didn't need to add any solder. Heat the board and transformer up until the solder melts and use a toothpick or some non-metallic uh, object to finally position the transformer. Let it cool. You'll need to also solder these pads together as obviously we're keeping and using this snap off half of the circuit board. At the top of page three on the 3108 data sheet, you'll see the output voltage options and how to wire VS1, VS2, VOX and ground to get the regulated output voltage you need. Now, in my case, I went with 3.3 volts output. So I have VS2 grounded and VS1 connected to VOX, which happens to be how linear technologies set it up in their schematic. Also, solder together all the ground connections. Uh, they should all be connected to the ground plane on the board, but it seems to me there was one or two that for some reason weren't connected and my board initially didn't work until I soldered them all together. Now you don't have to do this of course, but I soldered some DuPont connectors to my board for convenience. Now I have quick connects at V out and ground for the output voltage, VST and ground for the storage capacitor if you want to use it, and V in and ground for the input voltage from the Pelche tile. You're now ready to rock. It is important to get the polarity right from the Pelche tile. Usually the cold side has print on it. Uh, to help you remember, just think that normally the hot side is exposed to extreme heat that might burn off or burn off the ink or blacken the hot side. So they put the ink on the cold side. As long as there is a temper differ temperature differential with the cold side colder than the hot side, then it will generate electricity with the red wire being positive. So make sure the red wire goes to V in and the black wire goes to ground. You should now be able to generate enough power to run an LED just from your body heat.
You can put a few tiles in series to make sure you get over that 20 millivolt hump. And you can also add a super capacitor to the VST output and ground. Uh, this is optional, but any extra power above and beyond what's being drawn from V out will get, to, will get diverted to storage in the super capacitor. During times of power demand and no power supplied at V in, the chip will use the stored power from the supercapacitor instead. Thanks for watching. Please make sure to check out the other science shorts on this channel. And of course, please take a moment to like and subscribe. And even better yet, share this video on social media. And thanks. You can check out other science shorts or my workshops and online courses at techvalleysciencecenter.com. Notice the Canadian spelling of the word center. This project actually involved some more advanced electronics, but we cover beginner electronics in several of my workshops held around the country or in my online courses, such as my Robotics Learn by Building series of courses, where we start with electricity and electronics in our learning about robots and how to build them. You can check those out on jetpackacademy.com. Have a great day.